All right, so now it's time to create the variations for this. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the reference image. Here we have the large uh, piece of furniture here in the center. We have two variations of that. We have this medium one and we have the small one. So those are the two variations that we have to create. Now, let's look at the differences. The medium one here is about half the size of this one, roughly. Uh, same thing with the small one. Obviously, the medium and small one have different heights, okay? And the, uh, the medium one here has this sort of uh, shelf outline that goes along here on the sides and on the top and the bottom. See that? This big one doesn't have that, so we'll have to create that piece of geometry. The small one has the same exact thing as the medium one, except the top part here has a sort of arch to it as opposed to just being straight and flat like the medium one, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's create the medium variation. All right, so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the geometry that I already have. There's no point wasting time creating new geometry all over again. Wouldn't make any sense, and it's not efficient. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take this guy here and clone him, okay? So now I have a copy of him. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to basically slice this thing in half. And the way I'm going to do that is very easy. I'm going to go to the modifier list here. And if I go down, I'll see a slice modifier. All right. If I go up here to the slice modifier, I have a slice plane object. And right now, it's pretty much laying flat on the ground. So what I want to do is use the rotate tool. Make sure you have angle snapping turned on, which is this button up here. A is the shortcut. I'm going to rotate this about 90 degrees this way. So it basically slices this thing straight down the middle. Okay. Now I'm also going to tell it to remove one of the halves. I'm going to tell it to remove the bottom right here. Also, make sure that the operate on feature is set to this polygon as opposed to this face, the triangle. Okay? All right. So with that done right there, I have half of the object. Okay? So no problem there, right? I'm going to go ahead and collapse that, collapse the modifier stack. Now, one other important thing here is if I look at this. The middle part has these lower panels here, which look like squares. And then the, the medium size one and the small one have these smaller panels that are kind of squished together and are about half the size of these. Okay? So how are we going to do that? Well, it would be a real problem, a real waste of time to recreate the geometry here and make it smaller. Wouldn't make any sense. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select that polygon right there. And I'm going to grow the selection until I have all of these, this whole section of polygons right there. I'm just going to delete that geometry. I don't need it. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here into edge mode. And I'm going to select that edge up there. Extrude that down like so. I'm going to use target weld and target weld that. Let me see this. Target weld, target weld that down there. Okay. Sometimes it could get a little tricky. All right. So with that done, I'm going to take this guy here. And I'm going to move him over here, okay? So I can see that I can move him over here, but I'm not going to eyeball. I'm going to be a little bit more precise about, the, about this placement. I'm going to select this one over here, the main one. I'm going to select that polygon right there. And I'm going to steal its X coordinate. So let's use the transform typing tool, copy the X coordinate right there. Go back to this object and use the move tool and paste the X coordinate. And now it's going to stick properly to where it's supposed to, okay? But you can see that it's a little bit uh, too big. If we look at the image here, we can clearly see that there's some space right here. In other words, this part has to be pushed toward the wall, okay? And it's also shorter, but we'll worry about that in a moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to wireframe mode and select all the vertices of the front right here, all of these. And I'm just going to move them back manually. I'm just going to eyeball this. I move them back, something like this looks pretty good, okay? Again, we don't have to go exactly by the reference image. It's just there as a rough guide. Okay, next thing to do is I got to move this stuff down. Let me see how I have to move it down. If I look at this, the top has to be moved down to about here. So there's the bottom of the molding, and there's the top of this molding. So we have a little bit of space there, a few inches, okay? Now, the top here has to match up with the top here. So we can't just grab the entire top of this and just yank it all down. It won't, it, uh, it won't be right, okay? But you can see that this part here, the little part of the little grooves, actually is lower. So this is what I'm going to do. Let me go to wireframe mode. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select all of the top vertices up here as well as all the top vertices of that little groove piece right there okay if all that stuff selected I'm gonna move all that stuff down I'm gonna move it down to about right here okay so remember what we saw in the image the space right here from the bottom of the top molding to the top of this molding right here is gonna be about this much see that that looks pretty much like the image okay so I'm gonna say that I'm happy with that at the same time I left this polygon at the same height as this one. I didn't move it at all. See that? So it's more like the uh, like the image that I have. Okay. Now down here, I have this beveled area. I don't need that beveled area because if we look at the image, we don't have that beveled area. It's just this kind of squarish frame. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mimic that, and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and take. Let me see. I'm going to take this polygon. I'm going to move it down to about the height of this edge. So the height of this edge is 3 feet 7 inches. I'll copy that. And I'll paste that right there. There we go. I'll go to vertex mode and I'm going to target weld this because I don't need that right there. I'm just going to move that right there. Perfect. Okay. Next thing I need to do is I need to create as you can see here in the image, I need to create this geometry, this sort of outline frame right there for the shelf. So let me see how I'm going to do that. I already have it basically for the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create it for the bottom. So I'm going to go to uh, edge selection mode here. I'm going to select these two edges. I'm going to connect those in the middle. Make two segments. I'm going to use pinch to push them off to the sides. Okay, something like that. Then I'm going to use polygon selection mode here. I'm going to select this polygon and that polygon. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extrude those and I'm going to move them down like this. And I'm going to move them down to about, I should still have the coordinates from that bottom polygon and I do. So I'll hit enter. There we go. Close that and delete those polygons. Don't need them. I do have some polygons in the, on the inside of the object, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to leave that alone. So uh, there we go. Now we have this sort of outline here. All right. Now the outline in the image is a little bit thicker than what we have. So now I'm just being really picky. So I'm going to go ahead and scale these in on each other. You can see that we're not scaling correctly though. Let's go back here, up here to our selection method and let's go to our selection center, the second option. And just go ahead and scale this until you get about a thickness or width that you like. So I'm going to go with something like this, okay? And then down here, I'm going to leave the bottom alone. I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Okay, so uh, that is pretty much done. Now what we need to do is create the detail for the bottom right here. So how in the world are we going to go ahead and, and, uh, and do that? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to edge mode, and I'm going to select that edge up there and that edge down there for this object. I'm going to connect that one time, make sure pinch is set to zero, slide is set to zero, hit OK. So it's basically cut in the middle right there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, these polygons and I'm going to delete them because I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to come back to this object over here. I'm going to go to polygon mode. I'm going to select those two polygons and I'm going to grow so I can select that whole piece right there. Hold down shift and move this to the side to rip it off into a new object. Make it a new object, not an element. Okay? I'm going to select that new object, go to the hierarchy tab, go to effect pivot only, and go to center to object. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that pivot point up to that top vertex that's up there. Okay? So I'm going to snap it right up there. And by doing that, what this would allow me to do is, remember I, uh, I cut that right there? There should be a vertex right there that I can snap this to, and there it is. See, so there's a vertex right there that I can easily just snap that to. And now what I can do is I can scale this down in itself like this to squish it in, and there we go. I'm going to scale it until I get just about the right amount, something like that. And there's going to be a little bit of a gap. Let's see if I can get that better. Okay. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap left right there. That's not a problem. We're going to fix that right now. 
Uh, we're going to fix that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this guy up here. This guy, the medium variation, if you want to call it that. I'm going to go to attach and I'm going to attach that new object. Okay. And I'm going to go to edge mode. And I'm going to go to target weld, turn snaps off. I'm going to target weld that edge to that edge to seal that up right there. Now, on the opposite side over here, I go to wireframe mode. And I go to vertex mode. I can see that that's what I need to snap to. So I'll go to target weld and I'll snap that right there. And if I go down to the bottom, I should have the same, uh, same situation. And I do. So I'll target weld that right there. And there we go. We're done. Okay. So I just solved that problem that we had right there. So now we have this part done right here, and the rest of this is pretty much done. Okay. All right. Let's create the small variation. That's going to be pretty easy to do. I'll use the medium variation to make a copy. Okay. I hit OK. I'm going to position it correctly. So I'm going to select this guy, select that polygon. I'm going to steal its X transform. Okay, we go back to this guy, paste the X transform, and there we go. Same deal as before. I'm going to go to wireframe mode, select all the vertices in the front. I'm going to turn ignore back facing off to make that easier. I'll select all those vertices that are in the front. And I'm just going to eyeball this and move this back like so, about this much. I'm looking at this for reference. So I'm going to try to move it to about the same amount. Okay, so it looks like the same amount. Okay, so. There we go. That's uh, that's pretty much done right there. Okay, pretty neat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select all the top vertices. And I'm going to show you here the image. If I look at the image here, okay, this is a little bit different. Unlike before where we had to keep the top of the shelf here aligned, we no longer have to do that. Now we can take everything and just move it down. And I'm going to go by this. See the, the bottom of the top molding right there? and then the top of this molding. See that little distance right there? It's very similar to this distance up here. I'm going to go ahead and use that as my guide. So make sure you have all these vertices on the top selected. And just move that down like this about to right there is pretty good. So the top right here and the bottom edge right there have about this distance which is almost the same as that one. Okay, so that's pretty good. Okay, so I don't have to worry about the bottom because that's already done. Perfect. All I have to do now is create the arch. Um, if I look at the reference image, remember how we have this arch right here? I'm just going to go ahead and recreate that. That's going to be pretty, pretty easy to do. It's not going to be a problem at all. I'm going to take this polygon here. I'm going to move it down a little bit lower, something like that. And I'm going to go to edge mode and select these two edges. I'm going to connect those one time straight down the middle. And I'm going to move that new edge up to about maybe, maybe right there. It's pretty good, okay? Then I'm going to use the chamfer tool. I'm going to chamfer this until it's almost all the way to the to the to, to the ends right there. I'm going to segment this about let's see about 15 times is going to look pretty good. Okay, so I'll hit OK. Now the polygon right there is messed up, so I'm going to fix the triangulation. That's pretty easy to do. I'll just go up to the graphite modeling tools, triangulation, hit retriangulate, and there we go. Problem is solved right there. So we're under it out. I have that nice little arch right there. Okay, perfect. Uh, so that is pretty much done. Okay, so I've got the medium, small, and the large variations complete. I'm going to end this video here, and in the next one, we're going to create the molding pieces for the medium and the small variation. So I'll see you there.